I'm Natalie Allen. I'm with CNN International, and I've been an environmental journalist with the Weather Channel as well. And today I was speaking to the Solar Summit here in Georgia about all of the different experiences I've had covering environment and innovation and all the fascinating things that come with that. It, of all the things I've done in over 20 years of reporting at three different networks, covering the environment has been the coolest thing that I've done because it, to me, is the most important story of our time. Uh, preserving, conserving, uh, adapting to the changing climate and who's doing what and how we can make things better and be less polluting. It's fascinating. And I've covered small entrepreneurs, young people doing things. I've covered big companies changing the way they manufacture, say, carpet. Uh, carpet, by the way, takes 20,000 years to disintegrate in a landfill. So a carpet company in Georgia has come up with a way to recycle carpet. And they're also making their company carbon zero by 2020. So I think the big message today is you don't have to wait for Washington or for a summit in Copenhagen that people can just stake leadership on something. Walmart's doing that as well. I talked about that as well. Walmart has taken leadership on sustainability and uh, changing people's minds, changing the way vendors package their products and make their products. So a lot is going on. A lot of people are realizing that this is the only solution that you have to change and adapt. And it's very wonderful thing to get to cover in the news business. Well, I think the news is reporting on all of the extreme weather that we've been seeing, but it seems to be a big question mark still over what's causing it or what's the link. But people are asking the question. Some people are wondering, is this related to climate change? Or certainly we're having extreme weather for some reason, and it's affecting people, it's affecting homes, it's affecting regions. So I think that when there are situations involving the weather, suddenly everyone reacts. But unfortunately, when things calm down, people go back to doing what they were doing. Kind of like when oil prices go up, everyone's demanding, where are the electric cars? Where are the hybrids? And then oil prices go down. And we're also busy. We keep doing what we're doing. But all the while, as we learned today here at the summit, there are industries making changes. And there are things that are going to happen. I asked somebody today, I said, when will I walk into a Home Depot or a Lowe's and the solar panels will be right there and, I, and they'll be cost efficient and I can get them on my house. And they said, it's coming. What has to happen for mainstream to really adopt all these important changes that need to take place? And in my experience as a journalist, if people can't feel it right here and can't see it, they don't support change. So as we get these extreme weather situations and as more communities deal with drought and other issues that really affect their lives, that's what will slowly make it happen. But if they don't see it, they just keep going on with what they're doing and don't really think from day to day, what am I doing that's affecting the world in the big picture? A lot of people don't live like that. A lot of people do, but I think most do not. Well, I think that part of the reason that the media has gotten a little sleepy around these environmental issues is we keep talking about this is coming and this is coming, but we have talked about electric cars for so long, we've talked about solar for so long, but people still can't see it in the stores, they can't see it on the car lot, and it's not at a price point that they can afford. When the prices are such, or there are incentives that are such that people can buy these things and save money. For many people, the motivation is saving money. Nothing's wrong with that. That's when you'll see more of the mainstream adopt uh, good solutions that are a healthy environment and uh, are energy efficient. Um, I would follow Jib Ellison of Blue Sky. He is the one that really set Walmart on a course to become leaders uh, in the environment. I would follow uh, Dr. Suzuki, David Suzuki, the most respected, one of the most respected people in Canada, and his message is just so rock solid. And he, and not only big picture, uh, but also little things we can all do uh, with the environment. And there's so many people. I would also, I don't know if she's on Twitter, but Sylvia Earle is a scientist in residence for the National Geographic, and she is a famous oceanographer. And I went diving with Sylvia, and she talks about what's happening to our oceans as far as acidification and pollution. And she will tell you what fish you should and should not be eating as well. So I'd give her a try. Spend a day, I think I would spend it with Tom Friedman of the New York Times. 
He's written books. He writes columns on environmentalism. He travels and speaks with so many different people and businesses. Uh, I would spend the day with him.